Macaroons are incredibly popular, pricey, and one of the most difficult pastries to master. That is, if you don't have the right teacher. Joining us now to show you how you can learn to make this French cookie is Cheryl Angler from Bell Kitchen. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for joining us today on Live in the Bay. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course. Now, macaroons, sometimes when people hear that, they're not quite exactly sure what that is. Describe to us what this delicious French cookie is and why it's so special. It's particularly special, uh, first of all, only four ingredients. Um, so it's a naturally gluten-free dessert. It is uh, difficult to make. In <laughs> fact, it's actually weather dependent. Really? Yes. And what do you mean by that? If it's humid outside, it's probably not a great time to do them. Okay, yeah. so these are actually French macaroons mm -hmm. compared to the Italian cookie. Uh -huh. Two different cookies. What's the difference, Cheryl? Uh, the difference is the method by which you create uh, the meringue. Okay. So a French meringue, it doesn't involve any heat at all. An Italian meringue uh, involves heating the sugar to a fairly high temperature. Okay, yeah. so you have to kind of know the heating, you have to know the weather, all these factors play into making the perfect cookie. Correct. And that's why you yourself have classes for people. I Talk do, to us fact. about some of the classes you have. Yeah. I love teaching classes. I have classes for adults as well as classes for children online. Um, I think people come to the table, some of them have tried making macarons, others just really want to improve on what they do. Mm -hmm. We take the class from start to finish. Everyone is it uh, gets equipment and it's hands-on. Okay, so what can, if, if people do come to the class, you said it's all ages, adults, children, mm -hmm. yep. is, it, is it going to simplify the process? Can they leave, leave your class knowing how to make it at home? 100%. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> all right, well, let's go over some of the macaroons that you brought today. Okay. Maybe starting from over here. Can you tell us the, the little bit of the differences between these cookies here? Uh, so, uh, normally macarons uh, are going to have some food color in them. That's what makes them, you know, these ones in particular fairly mm -hmm. special. Uh, a good macaron uh, has no hollows in the shell. Okay. Okay, so this one is filled, it's done correctly. And, and can you maybe explain what that means, no hollows in the shell? And that's, yeah. that, that's what determines a good macaron, One of right? the good things. So that would be air in here. That means the cookie wasn't cooked, it wasn't cooked completely. Uh -huh. The other thing, the core differentiating factor in a macaron are these foamy bits right here. Okay, that these I see right here along yeah, the edge. Yeah, these are called feet. Really, With feet? Macarons <laughs> without feet or a cookie. <laughs> okay, so the macarons yeah. need the feet or else Absolutely. it's just a plain cookie. Absolutely. Okay, so that's that's what it looks like on the inside mm -hmm. and you said it has to have feet. Now what are some of the different macarons that you made? So these are particularly special. There is no dye in this one. Mm -hmm. In the shell I put uh, matcha and spirulina. So this is completely natural yeah. with uh, dark chocolate and a crush of uh, freeze-dried raspberry. Oh my goodness, yeah. that is so delicious. <laughs> now when it comes to the different macarons and the flavors that you want to put in the coloring, does anything go together or how do you plan some of the flavors that might taste delicious? Well, uh, oftentimes what I do is I look at flavors. If I really want to go over the edge, like on this one, where you have various flavors, for the most part, it's a single flavor. Macarons get their flavor from the buttercream. Mm -hmm. In this case, they're getting some flavor from the shell, but for the most part, it is coming from these buttercreams. Oh, wow. I'm just going to pick this one up really quickly. I want to give our viewers a tighter view of this cookie. Now, you said there are four easy steps to making a macaron. Right. Walk us through those four easy steps really quickly if you don't For mind. sure, not at all. Uh, the first step is going to be your uh, meringue. Mm -hmm. After the meringue is complete, it is um, making your macronage. Okay, that means mixing your meringue with the dry ingredients. In this case, it's almond flour and some confectioner's sugar. Uh, then it's piping it and then finally baking it. And the piping part, that's probably fun because you get to get a little creative with that, right? Yes. <laughs> and you know, it's very meditative. Is it? <laughs> yeah, I bet sitting there doing so many. <laughs> now, when you create macarons, how many at a time do you make? Well, in the bakery, we would do a thousand a day. A thousand? To date, oh. we've done about a half a million. Today? Oh my goodness. How do you keep track of all those? <laughs> Packaging. 
<laughs> wow, that is so incredible. So I just really quickly, Cheryl, if people are interested and want to come see some of your classes, where can they find more information? Uh, they can look me up at uh, bellkitchen.com. It's just B-E-L-L-E dash kitchen.com. Mm -hmm. uh, the classes are there and the way to get a hold of me is also there. And they can also find some of these incredibly delicious macarons. They can look at them, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Cheryl, yeah, for joining absolutely. us here on Live in the Bay. We appreciate it. Thank you. To learn how you can sign up for a class yourself, head to liveinthebay.tv.